Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, we're going to cover variables, one of the most fundamental concepts in Python and any other programming language you're going to come across. So we've got three print statements. Obviously, they are going to uh, print out hello world three times. Let's just verify that that's correct by running Python 3 and then the name of our script file, hello world.py. And as expected, we get hello world three times. But typing in the same value multiple times is time consuming and stupid. As a programmer, you should always try to be lazy. Don't repeat yourself and get away with the least amount of typing possible. So what we're gonna do instead is create a variable. Variables are used to refer to things in Python. They are the way you're going to refer to values. I might as well start using your code name. So now instead of saying, hello world three times in three print statements that are identical, we can, <laughs> we can do one better. We can now have three identical print statements that print the same message out. So when I run this, I should still get, so I've deleted one, but I should still get hello world, hello world. So what's happening here is that I've told Python, hey, from now on, message is gonna be defined. It's gonna be something you can actually look up and it's gonna to point to this value, hello world. Let's jump into the uh, REPL real quick. We're gonna say, hello world. You, do you remember what this evaluates to? Take a second and try to remember. If I hit enter, what happens? Well, before I get another input line here, the value of this is going to be returned to me and the value of it is hello world. If I wanna capture this essentially in a variable, I'm going to explain why that analogy is wrong in just a moment. Nothing will be returned, but now I can refer to message and I get that same value back. So me actually typing hello world is now equivalent to me typing message. What Python actually does is it goes and looks this value up. Like a dictionary or a phone book, message is now defined. Python can look at it and see, oh, message, well, Dave actually means this value here, hello world. So this is exactly as if I typed hello world in the REPL here, in the Python shell. Now I said before, it's captured in this variable, which now refers to it. The variable refers to it, that's true, but it's not actually captured in the variable. One of the incorrect analogies that you'll often get or explanations of variables is that a variable is like a bucket. It holds a value of some kind, and that's just wrong. A variable isn't a bucket at all. There's nothing inside of it. It's a symbol that Python can go look up. That symbol points to something. So it's not really a bucket. It's a label that you can attach to any bucket. So the bucket that holds this hello world string is just that bucket is a memory location on a RAM stick in your computer with some ones and zeros in it. Message is what allows Python to actually go and look that value up. So it's a label more than a bucket. I know that seems really pedantic, but you're gonna hear that sort of incorrect version often. And later on, when you're doing more advanced things, it's gonna make you confused if you think of variables as buckets, because they don't work like that. When you do more advanced things, you have to understand how they're actually working kind of underneath the covers. So I might sound long-winded and pedantic now, but you'll thank me in two to three years. Just you wait. Okay, so now we've got a message. Why are these things called variables at all? Well because we can rebind them. They are variable, they can change. So if the second time I say goodbye world instead of hello world, now when I rerun this file, I'm gonna see hello world and goodbye world. There are some programming languages where you cannot do that, where these are immutable, they're unchangeable. Once you define something, that thing always refers to the value that it was first mapped to with this equal sign. In Python, variables are a symbol like this, an equal sign, you don't need the spaces around it, but that's proper Python form. And then some value, it doesn't have to be a string like this, hello world, it could be a number, it could be a totally different kind of value, but it can be remapped. So here, message points to hello world, and then we say, no, 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 we're actually gonna take this label and stick it on another box over in this other memory location, it is goodbye world. And that works, the same print statement works. A quick word about variable naming. Message is a perfectly acceptable variable. 
nine messages is not. Variables can't start with numbers, but as long as they don't start with numbers, they can contain alphanumerics, uppercase and lowercase, underscores, and numbers, zero through nine. So some variable nine is perfectly acceptable, but the reverse, nine variable sum, is not because it starts with a number. If you can remember that one simple rule, you'll be fine. We'll talk a little bit more about variables and naming things a little bit later once we've looked at all the basic Python data types and done some actual programming and written some programs. That's actually one of the really hard problems in software development is naming things in a way that's going to make them intuitive to figure out for other people. Your variables are the primary way that you're going to do that um, other than keeping your code from getting too complicated. So as you're naming things, make sure you're naming them in a way that is uh, that makes sense to you, where the variable actually, you know, I could just I could name this foo as well. And the, the program would still work the exact same way, except now it's much harder to read and edit, especially if it becomes more complicated, because foo doesn't mean anything to me, although message does. That being said, proper Python form is this. All lowercase separated by underscores. Avoid numbers in general, but they are legal. The last thing I want to caution you against is remapping things that already exist in your current, what's called a namespace. We'll talk about what that is later, but it's basically just how Python, the place where Python looks things up. So in this namespace, foo has been defined as hello world. Here foo is being redefined as goodbye world. But you know what else has been defined? Print. Print has been defined. It's a built-in function that you have available to you to print things to the screen. Now, Python's pretty relaxed. It's like kind of a surfer dude of a language. So if you're like, hey, I'd like to redefine print as this is wrong because it is, well, Python's going to be like, yeah, dude, no problem. Just relax. It's all good. But it's not all good because look, now when we try to print foo, nothing's going to work anymore because print now no longer is this function that we're expecting. We're trying to use it like a function, but it's not. It is the string. This is wrong. So let me ask you, what kind of error do you expect this to throw now? You don't have to know the exact name of it, but what kind of error? Print now is a string, and we're kind of unsure about what's going to happen when we try to talk to this as if it were a function by like passing it an argument. So let's find out. It works. First of all, the program works. The program doesn't just like immediately exit. That's another important thing to realize. Python will happily run one line after the other before checking to see if the whole program will run. And right about here, Python figures out, no, this is going to go really wrong. And that's when you get an error. So the hello world prints just fine, line three. The goodbye world prints just fine, on line six. Nine, we redefine print, and it's still fine. But on line 10, Python realizes everything has gone pear-shaped. It's trying to talk to the print symbol as if it were a function, right? It's got these parentheses, it's trying to pass something in. We'll talk about functions in just a little bit. But now, when it looks up print the way that Python looks up variables, it goes, oh, print is just the string. So what we're doing down here is exactly the same error that would be produced if we tried to do this. So this is now translating to this. And that cannot work. Just wanna, just wanna prove that to you. So I've rerun print foo, and then I've rerun this is wrong foo. You can see this is exactly the same error, right? Okay, so hopefully now you have an intuitive understanding, or you're starting to, of how variables are assigned with this equal sign, nice and simple, how they're looked up by the Python interpreter, and how things can go wrong. Like if you shadow existing variables, that is redefine built-in keywords or built-in functions in Python that Python needs and probably your program needs to work. Well, that's how things can go wrong. So that's a quick introduction. Again, don't be afraid of making things fail intentionally to learn. That's one of the fastest ways to learn. 
because you're going to have to go through like 10,000 of these errors before you're really good at Python. So the faster you start getting errors, the better. And with that upbeat note, I leave you here. In the next video, we're going to take a look at strings. Strings are this thing we have been using. It's the only Python data type we've really talked about. There's other kinds of data types, but strings you'll use everywhere. And so it's the first data type we'll cover. So I'll see you in that next video.